Today we are going to be making avocado ink. You're going to need a cutting board, a fairly large sharp knife, the avocado pits that have been washed off um, and all of the kind of gunk gotten off them, and some water. I also added the avocado peels, so you're going to want to make sure the peels are scraped out. The easiest way to do this is to place the avocado pits onto a um, cloth just so when you're cutting them in half the first time they're not rolling around and it's safer that way. So what I did was just cut those in half and I cut them into like chunks and they are kind of uniform in size, not really. Um, you're just going to want to cut them into some chunks and set them aside. And they're not the easiest things to cut and sometimes you have to like really work at it. So all the ones you see me cutting now, I've already cut them in half. Once you get all your avocados cut in half, you're going to place them in your skillet. And I have about um, a quarter to a half a cup of pits right there. And I put that into two cups of water. And so I'm just cutting them to where they're like more uniform in size. So we have our pot on our stove and I use a um, stainless steel pot. Um, that way we don't use any, get any of the leaching, any of the chemicals or any of the aluminum or changing any of that out of my dye. So I put two cups of water. I'm going to toss the peels in the pits in there. And I'm going to turn it on medium heat. I want to bring it to not a boil but to a simmer and that's going to take just a few minutes. Once that water starts to simmer you're going to see a slight change in color. This is about the 30 minute mark for me and we have some color change going on and you can see just a little bit of a simmering and a bubbling and it's going to do this for an hour, hour and a half. So let's check it again in just a few moments. Here we are when I started adding the peels. I realized that I wasn't really liking the color and that I thought the peels would add it, make it a little darker. So I decided I rinsed them off, I chopped them up, and I decided to just put them in there. Um, if you make a lot of guacamole or you eat a lot of avocados like I do, um, you're not going to want to make dye every time you do this. So what, all I do is I rinse them off really well and I put them in the Ziploc bag in a freezer. You don't have to use a Ziploc bag. You could probably just put them into like a mason jar and put the lid on it and drop that down in the freezer. Anything that's freezer safe. We're going to let that simmer a few more minutes. This is probably about the hour mark. Then I let this go probably about two hours. All right, so here we are. It's been about two hours and I have got a color that I really, really like. I'm going to test a piece of paper and I have been doing that periodically and I will show you the test um, when I start drawing. Um, I was just trying to see what color it really was going to be. And you can see it's very, very faint there. I let it go probably about another hour from here. Um, and then I got a color that was really, really beautiful. I have read that if you put your dye materials in a um, mesh bag, then you won't have to pick stuff off of your paper, get it out of your dye. And this is boiling a little too much. I would not let it boil like this. And so once you get a color that you're happy with, you're going to take it off of the heat and let it cool just a moment.
And so I was just pouring it out to see how much I had gotten out of it. And I had a straight, I had my spoon on there and you see that that didn't, I just wanted to get a little bit out, see how well it looked before I moved on. So all I have is a funnel with a, I put a paper towel in there and you can see that this is the color that I got. Um, I let it cool overnight and then I went back to it and then all I'm doing is draining it in there. I just don't want any of the um, dye material to get in there and I want a nice clear color. So you're going to let it strain. You're going to get about eight ounces if you start with two cups. And these are one ounce bottles. For the second part of the making ink, you're going to have to stabilize it in some way. I have the strained ink. I have gum Arabic a glass bottle and a dropper. Uh, the dropper is important for sort of the second sort of step. So into a bottle that's got an ounce of ink, you're going to put 10 drops of gum Arabic and one clove. And the clove is going to help um, keep it from molding. And I can tell you that's really, really important. I have forgotten to do it and it only takes about a week for the mold to form in your dye. Um, so you're just going to drop the 10 drops in there, give it a little shake, and you have avocado ink. Let's do a test. I just wanted to see how well that this would paint in the very beginning. So I had one of my sample jars and I dated all my jars so I would know like which batch it came out of. And it looks really, really light when you start painting it on. And it's just sort of like watercolors. You can make it darker by just going over it a second time. Here is the finished background. I used this for a project for K-Space Art Lab and I'm going to link my video below to this one. Here is a second background so that you can see how I would work on this. So I have the avocado ink. I'm gonna put the lid back on it. And when I labeled my ink, I just did a simple label. I painted a piece of watercolor paper so that I could see which color it is. I do believe that every time you make the ink, you're going to get a different color each time. And so it's probably a good idea to date the batch and what color it is. Um, and be a little open to it might be a different color each time. And it's probably going to be. Um, I have been working with my inks with a glass dip brush. I just purchased this on Amazon. I got a pink one because I love pink. And so I really love working with it. Um, I shook my ink up. You're just going to sit the dip brush in here. And this took a little bit of like figuring out like how I was going to work. Um, the dip brush is unique in that if you put it straight down, you're going to get a blob of ink. I can get something that I don't love. Let me turn the page over. I really love that drawing, so let's not mess that one up. If you put your ink pen straight down, you're going to get a blob of ink, which is really fun. You can like sort of like feather it out. You can pick it up and make it um, move normally. You could use another um, pen. I have a blue pen. I have a... I have a nib pen, a cartridge, and you could draw 
with the nib pen and you get this beautiful effect and I'll show you this on the other page. But I just want you to notice that when you're using these, these nib pens that straight down will give you a blob and you probably don't want that. And so you're just filling this with ink and I'm left-handed so that probably makes a difference in how I hold that. I had too much ink on it. And so the ink is going to run out. So you have to be sort of aware of like um, the ink is going to run out. So you're not going to draw for long periods of time. You're going to have light lines and dark lines depending on how where you're at in the dipping process. So I'm going to move my ink so you don't see me dip all the time. We're also going to just smear that out so that I don't get it on the back of my paper as bad. All right, so let's start. So what I love about this is you can find areas that you love and build the color up. I would have a paintbrush in case you messed up like I did. And you can pull this ink out. So what's beautiful about this ink is you can use it with a pen or you can use it with a brush like watercolor. Like I said, it's got a little bit of gum Arabic in it. And all I'm doing is forcing the ink where I want it to go. So I'm just gonna let that section dry. Let's not do that again. So what I love about this is that when you draw over it, you get this sort of aged look that's not like stark ink. And when I first started playing with it, I didn't know that I loved that, but now I love it. I love what the ink does on the paper. I love that it gives the shadow of something else and you can go back in and you can make your lines darker and you get just this lovely, um, color, sort of color on color. And so I told you I would show you how I did that earlier. Let's find another section. Let's do it right there. So if you put the drop in there, kind of leave it like that. I'm going to draw around it a little bit. So I have the dark, the like of blue. So this is blue ink. It's actually Waterman ink in my fountain pen. So I want to build a layer up before I do that. Look, it looks like a fish. I don't usually intentionally look for things, but that looks kind of like a fish. So we're going to break that bubble. Can you hear it raining outside? I really kind of love it when it rains. And you can see that it kind of changes the color of the ink and it gives you this sort of like lighter color while you're waiting for that to come out. I really kind of, I kind of dig that. So the more I work with the avocado ink, the more I really love its properties that you, when you brush it on, you can get sort of like lighter colors and darker colors. You can let it dry and you can go back to it. You can find sections that you really kind of liked. See, this has blue from where I was messing with it while ago. You can add colors and then it sort of dries and it builds up these beautiful transparent layers. Clean your brush out guys. Don't do what I just did. There you go. Got a beautiful sort of transparent layers and you can see that it will pick up the other colors and it will kind of dry lighter and then you look at it a while and then go back to it again. And it was a previous video, I was playing with other colors on top of this. And I started building up layers with a white jelly roll pen. Because it also has that sort of quiet area. 
when this dries, I'm going to go back by and darken it or lighten it. I'm going to cover it up with avocado ink because I don't really like that starkness. It's a very meditative thing to do to draw these abstracts like this. If you hear me get quiet, that's why. So I'm going to finish this one out for you. so here is the finished drawing there are sections of it I don't like I probably wouldn't do that again but I'm showing you how you can make the mistake um and I really kind of love it um dye material like it would do something again I added water after I drained it the first time, I brought it to a simmer, and I dropped some pre-soaked cotton yarn in it. So the yarn was already wet. It's the cotton that I've been using in the videos all along, and it was already wet. Um, I tend to just put two cups of water into a measuring cup, and I drop just a small hank of yarn in there. And then I'm just gonna let it set. I let it simmer for a couple of minutes, and then I walked away from it. I let this yarn simmer for about an hour, hour and a half, and then I just turned the heat off and I put it aside and I came back to it the next morning. When this yarn is done, you're going to pull the yarn out when it's cool and you're going to use, you're just going to rinse it with cool water. I can see what I'm looking for when I'm dying, when I'm rinsing is that there's no pink coming out into the rinse water. So you're going to turn it over your hand. You're just going to give it a couple of squeeze. Make sure you're using cool water. This yarn has already been pre-hanked. That's why I can ball it up like that. And that is in a previous turmeric video, which I will link below. And this yarn is going to be used for a weaving video in uh, later segments. I hope you enjoyed the bonus project.